Hello my little angels and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Alyssa and today I'm going to be showing you how to get this super fun kind of graphic sparkly purple look. I'm going to be using the Melt Cosmetics Recently Deceased palette from their Beetlejuice collection. I know that this was a really really hard palette to get your hands on because it was super limited and the collection sold out really quickly. So if you do not have this palette, you can definitely dupe with any of the other products that you have in your collection that look similar or you can completely reimagine this look. You can completely reimagine this look with your own color combination. The sky's the limit. You definitely don't have to have this palette in order to get it done because it was super, super limited. So that being said, if you guys are a fan of my very regular now <laughs> makeup content or just the content that I'm putting out in general here on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to let me know that you are enjoying hanging out with me. Um, so with that being said, let's get into this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started. Um, full disclosure, before we get started, I did not use only the palette for this look. I Once I started getting to kind of like figure out the shape of everything that I wanted, after I had everything placed, I kind of decided that I liked the center to just be like lighter and kind of like shimmery. I was going to put the same green that I have right here through the middle as well but I just feel like it was gonna make the look like a whole lot darker and as I was putting the green in here um, it's just like a little bit tricky to blend it into the purple which is I mean I, I knew that that was gonna happen because it's a really pinky purple so I just didn't want to risk it putting that green on the lid and it possibly looking like muddy and icky because I really love the way that this came out with the like shimmery color that I used so just have to put that out there that I used the palette, but I dipped outside of the palette just a little bit. So let's get started. Um, let's get this hair out of the way. So first things first, <clears throat> we're going to start by prepping with some eye primer. And as always, I'm going to use my... Oh, I've got a hair on my lens. As always, I'm going to use the ABH eye primer. And... I am going to apply this the way that I always like to apply it and I'm just going to blend it out with a beauty blender. This beauty blender, it was dry, I'm, I mean it was wet hours ago, but it's entirely dry now so it's basically just a dry beauty blender that I'm going to blend this out with and we're going to do this on the top and the bottom eyelid. Alright, so eye primer is on. Let's move on. I'm going to do another base before I put on my eyeshadow. So for this like shape we have through the crease here and along really, I mean all of the purple that you see, I'm going to use a base underneath my eyeshadow. Purples, if you've ever used purple eyeshadow before, you probably know that it's a really, really tricky color to use. Even the best purple eyeshadows out there often can be like a little bit patchy or just hard to blend. Um, that's definitely not the case with this palette. I think that this palette, um, this palette definitely has some really, really nice, super pigmented purples. But again, like if you just want to help your colors along a little bit, using a colorful base underneath them is just going to make everything so much cleaner, so much faster to apply. So. I'm going to use one of the gel liners that came with the Beetle, Beetle bleh, that came with the Beetlejuice collection. This one is called Utterly Alone and it's a really pretty shimmery purple. So we're going to apply this every single place that you see this purple here. So I'm going to start by applying just like a liner, a wing liner across the lid and I'm going to apply with one brush. So I'm using this brush from Anastasia which is an A28 brush. So just a small little liner brush here and I'm also going to use another ABH brush actually <laughs> to blend it out. This one is the A14 brush, so just a little pencil brush and that's just so I can help get a really soft smudged edge for this. So I'm just going to start applying and again I'm just going to start with that liner and then I'm going to work it up into the crease doing this kind of like arched shape and we're also going to apply underneath the eye as a base for the purple. 
So what I'm doing as I'm applying this is I'm going to be applying in layers. So I'm going to add a small layer of the gel liner and then I'm going to buff it out with that brush and then you'll see I'll just keep kind of layering on top until I get a nice depth for the purple and I'll do that on the top lid, the bottom lid and then into the crease as well. to another base with this lime green that I'm putting on the inner corner I wanted to make sure that it really popped so I'm also adding a base on the inner corner and into the waterline of the afterlife gel liner which also came out with the melt Beetlejuice collection so it's this really awesome kind of acidy lime green <clears throat> So we're going to do kind of the same type of application where I'm going to have two brushes in my hand. One is yet another ABH brush. This is the Swish brush. And then this little guy is the number 15 NYX brush. So just another little pencil type brush. This is just going to help buff out the corners on the inner corner. And then this Swish brush is nice and flat and pointy. So it's going to be really easy for me to apply into my waterline. So I'm going to start with the waterline first, and then I'll work my way out into the inner corner. So now that those bases are all put in place, we're going to start in with the eyeshadows. So I'm going to do the purple first. So just using this Sigma Small Tapered Blending Brush, the E45 brush, I'm going to first dip into the color Lost Souls, which is that pretty matte purple there. And I'm just going to start packing this on top of where all the purple is really lightly because I have foundation and powder on and everything and I don't want to have a huge purple fallout mess to clean up. But I'm starting first by just pressing this on top of where I want the purple to be most like rich. And then after I have that all just kind of packed in place, I'm just gonna take what's left on my brush now and slowly just start to blend around the edges a little bit. a smaller brush this is a brush from the makeup institute um, it doesn't have a name or a number on it but this little tiny kind of flat circular brush here from the makeup institute I'm gonna take that same purple shade and I'm just gonna use this to further accentuate this kind of like little pointed shape that I opted for on the inner corner so just kind of carving that out a little bit more using the flat edge to give my shape and then just kind of pulling down and out to blend that out and I'll just keep layering that color until I am happy with it so now that I have that inner corner placed I'm gonna add just a little bit more of a blend along the outer edges using, oh, I'm holding too many things, using the shade Bio Exorcist, this guy right on the end. I'm going to blend out all around the edges of the purple and I'm using a Sigma E36 blending brush. I love little tiny blending brushes like this, particularly for like 
blending around like outer edges really delicately. It works really, really well under the eye because it's so small. So we're just taking that and blending it out just a tiny bit more. A really, really good tip for doing the under eye, I obviously like to go crazy and blend super low, but I don't like to take it like halfway down my nose necessarily. So if I find that I'm blending my eyeshadows underneath and it starts to go a little bit too low, like let me give you an example. Like if I go under here and the edge of that, to me that's starting to just get a little bit too low. You can tell like I like to take it just about right there. So if I've accidentally pulled this too low here, I always keep a um, face powder, like a full, I mean a medium to full coverage face powder. This one is from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in number one fair. So I'm just going to keep this and I'm going to take a flat brush. This one is a Sigma Large Shader E60 brush and I'll just take a little bit of that and go under my eye and just knock that eyeshadow right back up. So purples are done. Let's finish off with the green on the inner corner. So I'm going to pack on top of the lime green that's on the inner corner and on my waterline using the same two brushes that I used to apply that lime green base. I'm gonna use the shade Beetlejuice, this one right here, and we're just gonna pack that on top of everything. <clears throat> Once we have that lime green packed all over, I'm going to go on top of that using the shade Neurotic, which is this pretty kind of like greeny gold shimmery color. I'm going to use one of the brushes from the Beetlejuice collection from Melt, so this little flat brush here, and I'm going to use the NYX Bear With Me uh, Revitalize and Set spray instead of using a setting spray that has a lot of like alcohol in it. I want to use something that is a little bit more emollient, so it's going to give me a creamier application, especially because I'm working on top of a lot of powder. I don't want this to start like pulling um, all of the product off or like kind of like, I, I guess pulling. <laughs> I don't want to start like pulling holes into this because I have quite a lot of layers on. So using something that is a little bit more emollient is going to give you that kind of softer, creamier application versus something that's like meant to like really lock down your eyeshadow and make it really bulletproof like a Urban Decay All Nighter or something like that. Alright so finishing off this look is where I'm gonna deviate from the palette and I'm gonna use a product that is I feel like I don't see enough people talking about this product and I'm absolutely obsessed with it. This is the Hank and Henry Liquid Eye Shimmer. When I first received these I was kind of confused by them because they just seemed like a cream eyeshadow that like wasn't coming out of the packaging or something for some reason. I was just really confused by them at first until I used them and they just give, I mean, you can see how gorgeous this looks on the lid. It just gives this like incredible, like soft, shimmery, like complex, wet look um, without looking like really like caked on and it doesn't look foiled or like metallic as much as it looks like super sparkly and just like like gorgeous so many liquid sh or cream shadows just don't really get this effect so I'm using the shade nebula which is this really pretty like kind of purpley color what I like about them okay excuse me let's be loud okay anyway what I like about them is they're like they're like jelly like it's really hard to describe the consistency but when you press in it just like a little bit will come off on your finger and they just give like the prettiest like sparkly 
wet look to the eye. I'm absolutely obsessed with them. They're really, really pretty to put with like just kind of like a soft, natural look as well. I just find that it's so hard to get this like soft, twinkly, like dewy, wet look with regular eyeshadows and a lot of like liquid or cream shadows. So these are like number one top, like my top pick for a really, really like sparkly look like this. So I'm gonna apply it with a brush. They also apply really, really well with your fingers, um, but my nails are a little bit too long right now to really be able to get in there. So I recommend doing it with your fingers, but a brush will work as well. I'm just using a flat brush. This one again is from ABH. It's the A3 brush. And I'm just gonna start packing this all over the lid just where I have the open space. So I'm not really overlapping this a whole lot on top of the purple. Oh, that's a little bit too much. So keeping it focused, keeping it focused mostly on the inside of the eye. And then I'm just gonna kind of lightly taper the shimmer off as I start to reach up to the brow bone. And you could like take this shimmer really all the way up to the brow bone if you like. It's your look. You do whatever you like with it. So I'm going to finish out this look now by just adding some lashes. I'm going to do some lashes on top and bottom. I'm going to start by curling my lashes. I'm applying the Melt Cosmetics Supernatural Lash as always because I really love this. And then we're going to put on some Tati lashes today, which was my first time ever trying Tati lashes. And I really like the way they came out. I'm not like super duper sold on these particular bottom lashes. Um, I'm thinking maybe I just don't like them with this makeup look as much. But um, I'm also just really picky about bottom lashes because I've been like wearing them for so long and cutting them and customizing them. So the lashes that I've opted for today are these ones from Tati. They're called Faux Me. So those are going to go on the top. And then on the bottom, another pair from Tati. These are the first time I'm trying these bottom lashes. Um, these ones are called Vibe Check. Um, so you can see I've just used a couple little pieces. I usually only use about like four or five pieces um, to go under my eye. But let's start with applying these top lashes. I really like these Tati lashes so far. One of the things I'm noticing is that they have like a really intense like crimp to them that makes them like go up or like makes them curl upward like really really intensely and I really like that because a lot of times eyelashes kind of stick out like a shelf and they don't look as long or as full when you're looking straight on in them so I like that these have a really, really like intense curl, so they will look a lot longer because I like my lashes dramatic. And today I'm gonna be using my tried and true duo glue just because I had it right next to me. <clears throat> but we'll give these guys a second to dry before we put them on. <sighs> I need to dye my hair and I'm conflicted right now. I don't know if I should keep my hair mint or if I should change my hair color I'm just really like I'm all over the place because I have to do my roots so when I have to do my roots I'm always just kind of like are are we gonna have an entire like new moment now are we an entire new person or are we just gonna like stick with what we know and love so I'm really, really conflicted right now I really don't know what to do so you guys let me know what do you guys think should I bleach my roots and keep my hair mint or should I change my hair color? Should I change it entirely? Should I keep it mint and like maybe add some extra color into it? Like right before I had it all mint, I had like pink in my bangs. What should I do? What do you guys think? Obviously I've done like every single hair color, but I don't know what to do right now. I'll probably be boring and keep it the same because I like this color, I don't know. I don't know. I always have this dilemma with my hair color. As soon as I have something, even if I like it, I'm sick of it. <laughs> okay, so just threw on those bottom lashes and let's finish off with a lip. I really didn't know what to do for a lip. Um, I want to stick 
in the Beetlejuice collection, I think. And I'm gonna do a red lip. I'm gonna do the color Miss Argentina. Again, every single motorcycle in Long Beach is out today, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna do the color Miss Argentina because I've been really meaning to wear this color and I haven't yet. So today's the day. And I'm gonna use a lip liner as well. This one is from KVD Vegan Beauty. It is in the shade X. I want to think that this is named after one of my favorite bands of all time, X, but it's probably not. But maybe it is. She has shades named like the Smiths and stuff. Or I shouldn't say she because she's not involved anymore. They, KVD, they have shades named after like the Smiths and stuff. So. I would be inclined to think that this is named after X, but it might not be. So we're going to line the lip and then fill in with Miss Argentina lipstick. Alright, so we're going to finish off with this lipstick in the center. Um, one of the best tips that I can give you when it comes to doing a really, really even, really crisp lip line is what you just saw me do and that whatever um, application you're using on one side of the mouth, you should mimic on the other side of the mouth. So what we have a tendency to do is on one side of the mouth, you'll come, so I'm right-handed, it would be comfortable for me to go from the outside of my mouth in and then inside out because that's just kind of the natural curve of my hand but what's gonna happen if I do that is when I work from the outside in towards the cupid's bow I'm gonna naturally round more just because I'm like that's just kind of the curvature of the hand and then as I'm coming back around I'm gonna be more shallow in my application on the other side so you're gonna end up with one side that looks like really big and full and overlined and another side that's kind of following your natural lip line a little bit better so best thing to do is figure out what kind of application you want to do whether you want to stick inside of your natural lip line or if you want to overline and then you're gonna mimic that same application on either side so I usually like to overline a little bit so um, I'll go from the outside in or if I don't want to overline which today I didn't really overline a whole lot I'm gonna work from the center out so you saw me work first from the center out over here and then the center out over here and that helps me get a little bit better symmetry so I don't have to go in and clean a bunch of things up because when you're using a lot of like concealers and things around the mouth to start cleaning up your application all of that is probably going to slip or cause your makeup to bleed a little bit you want as little product around the mouth as possible in order for it to last as long as possible so let's go ahead and fill in with this lipstick Alright guys, so that is going to do it for our second Beetlejuice look. Now using the recently deceased palette from Melt Cosmetics. Um, I know that this collection sold out like in two seconds. They anticipated it would. They warned everyone it would. I knew it was going to happen, but hey, so... For those of you who were able to get your hands on this collection, which is absolutely incredible, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I tried to do something that was a little bit out of the box. I didn't want it to be just like another smoky eye. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, continue to let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Um, I definitely want to start doing a series of just like basic things. I don't really know necessarily what to call it, but a series of like kind of like 101 how to do very like simple things. So starting with the lashes one and we're going to do like wing liner. I'm going to do highlight and contour. So you guys tell me what kind of like things you have common issue with or something that you like just can't quite get perfect yet and you want a little bit of help or you want a little bit of my insight into how to troubleshoot let me know below because I definitely want to start all of these um, kind of like crash course and like makeup basics 
So let me know. Um, let me know what um, fashion brands you guys would like to see me do fashion hauls for. Um, I have a couple more that I'm going to post for you guys, but if there's any particular brands you guys are interested in, um, obviously plus size, <laughs> size inclusive brands. Um, so let me know what you guys would want to see me or who you guys would want to see me get some uh, fashion items from and try them with you guys. Um, but yeah, as always, Let's have a conversation in the comments if you have any questions about anything. Thank you again so much for being here and hanging out with me and supporting my channel. It really means a lot to me. Um, so until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye!